The following is a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Levin presents. Shalom and welcome to Zola Levin presents. I'm Sandra and I want to thank you for watching. We've been talking about seasons and how God uses us for a season. Later in the program, we're going to meet Miles and Catherine Weiss, and they're going to talk about Ruth. Right now, I'm going to introduce you to my good friend, Dr. Tom McCall. You have been such a blessing to the ministry, and Rahab is one of the programs that you and Zola did yes, together. It's always great to be back here with you, you, Sandra, and uh, yes, Rahab uh, features very prominently in the uh, destruction of Jericho when the Israelites first uh, uh, took over the land back uh, 1500 BC thereabouts. And uh, here we have the statement of Rahab. She was a woman of faith. She had given refuge to the spies sent out right. from Joshua. But a Gentile. This and is a what's, Gentile. This is what yeah. makes it interesting. A Jericho Ruth, Yeah, Ruth and Rahab. Gentile women. Wonderful women of faith. And, and But she had faith. She, she had, had faith, faith in the yeah. God of Israel. Yeah. She says, I know that the yeah. Lord, Yahweh, the Lord has given this land to you and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. Yeah. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea and she goes on and on uh, counting uh, the great victories that uh, the, the Lord had given Israel and they knew that they were headed for Jericho. But she believed the Lord and yeah. the Lord did something wonderful for her and spared her family when the walls of Jericho fell. And she married into uh, the family of Israel. She, uh, Salmon was his name. Right. And their son was Boaz. Boaz, which ties right Ruth. in with the, the program we're going to do on Ruth. And Boaz yeah. became the husband of Ruth. Uh, who was also but a Gentile. But keep going with that. Keep yes. going with the genealogy. Well, well, and then uh, from there, yeah. we find that uh, the descendant of Boaz and Ruth was none other than David. Than King David. The king. The king. And uh, it, was, it was an amazing thing. I, in fact, that's all given in the last paragraph of the book of Ruth. It's wonderful. The yeah. genealogy it from, is. It uh, really is. from Perez, the son of Judah, down to David the king. I really enjoyed watching the old videos and the old tapes or whatever they call them now of you and Zola out teaching all around Israel. Y'all did one, such One of the places was job. Jericho. Yeah, uh, that's and, true. And, and, and that it, was true. A, it was a great uh, time we were there. That is true. And we are as we say, for such a season as this, we all have our seasons, and I'm excited to hear Catherine and Miles, and I really thank you for your service to the ministry. Great, it's uh, great to be with you, Yeah, Sandra. let's go to Jericho and see Tom. She is in the most wonderful genealogical line the world has ever known. What a blessing God gave to Rahab. And uh, the parallels that we could draw are really very obvious. We need to be, there need to be more people like Rahab. And uh, we uh, should believe like Rahab did, that God has give, given the land to them and we should do everything we can to help them. This parade of, of pilgrims arriving in these buses, pulling up to these ancient sites uh, all day long, uh, should always stand behind Israel. It's a sad thing because in some quarters today, even in some seminaries, there are people pulling away from the idea of Israel being a fulfillment of prophecy. That's simply not biblical, and, and, and it's easy when you come here to see that.
It is interesting how God uses us all, every one of us, Jews and Gentile, to further his kingdom. It always gets me excited when I hear stories of people knowing where God wants them to go. Tom, we're talking about seasons and changes and you know, Zola was for a season, and now Miles and Catherine are here. They're going to talk about Ruth. We're going to do some great things with this ministry. Oh, I know that's true. I, I look back at the times that Zola and I spent oh, over in Israel, yeah. Oh yeah. and the places that we went, uh, Jericho yeah. and uh, Jerusalem yeah. and all over Israel and Galilee, which he loved so much. Uh, Caesarea, everything was just uh, a, a great experience being with Zola uh, on all those trips. And as we look forward to the future, yeah. we, we see yeah. that uh, the, the ministry is continuing to focus yeah. on the Israel. Vision. Yeah, the vision and is Jewish the same, Jewish roots isn't it? Yeah. of Christianity and all the things that this ministry yeah. is famous for. Yeah. And now uh, having met uh, Miles and uh, Catherine, uh, I, I feel very confident that the that the Lord is really blessing this and is going yeah. to move the ministry right yeah. along, and it will be a blessing to uh, the people, Jews and Gentiles. Jews and Gentiles. Isn't that great? He's Jewish, Messianic, and she's Gentile. The story of Ruth, right it's there in a nutshell. It's great team, and yeah. yes, it, it, yeah. there is the, it's their own the story yeah. of Ruth together yeah. and how God brought them together. But this is, uh, this is the way it should be, and uh, yeah. the Lord's work yeah. is going to continue right yeah. here in the Zola Levitt ministry. Yeah, I, I do. I, I believe in my heart. Everyone has a season and has a length, and we just need to do what, what God wants us to do when He wants us to do it, and let Him take care of all the rest. Absolutely. Back after this. For insightful perspectives of Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. When you call, be sure to ask for our free catalog with the latest videos, books, and music. Our correspondence course, the Institute for Jewish Christian Studies includes reading packets, teaching CDs, and mail-in tests. You may want to join us on an upcoming tour of Israel or Petra, or cruise the Mediterranean visiting Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim Sha'alu shalom shalom In the holy city of Jerusalem Israel is about family and friends. You know, we're talking about new family. Mm -hmm. We've got new family with Miles and Catherine. They are like family. We're going to have new friends and new families in Israel. We are, and I'm just so delighted to have Miles and Catherine. Uh, their spiritual heritage, just through their marriage, they've been married 25 years. They have co-labored in ministry doing yep. counseling, yeah. led many tours to Israel in the past. Pastor um, tours. Yes, That's what I just absolutely. love Absolutely. Yeah, love it. They have been guides. They've been pastors. Uh, they yeah. really know the heart of Israel, and to have them on tour is such a privilege. It is a wonderful blessing. And, and we do become family on the tours. We look out at, after each other. We take care of each other. We make sure everybody's where they need to be. We do, and I don't think people realize how important that is. Um, when people come to Israel, you know, when you come with us to Israel, you're really going to be overwhelmed by the Spirit of the Lord. And to be on a tour with like-minded people who've been watching the broadcast with you, right, right, Sandra, right, just the privilege of right. this broadcast being on 30 plus years. But on tour, we have people that watch the show, that read the newsletter, right. and we truly do gel together. Uh, when you're at the Wailing Wall, when you're in the Jordan River, uh, when you're on the Sea of Galilee, we want you to come with us, friend. Go to Levitt, L-E-V-I-T-T dot -T com, click on tours. I do encourage you to register early because we do sell out about three or four months in advance. So. Call me in the office, 1-800-WONDERS, and I would love to talk with you personally. And we're doing, we're getting ready to do the series on Ruth. Yes. How amazing. Ruth went back to Israel. She was not from Israel and right. went 
to Israel, the land that she now said, your God will be my God. That's right. I think that's incredibly encouraging. It is encouraging, and people will feel that. Yeah. They'll feel that spirit over there, and, and we want you to come with us. Absolutely. You need to come now. It's a wonderful trip. I also want you to get the Levitt letter. This is full of information about Israel. It's full of information about the tour. Great articles. Great articles. I, I read it. I get it in the mail, and I think, I'm just going to read a couple of pages, and I sit down, and I've read the whole thing. I know you're going to enjoy it. You know, we've done this Psalms of Ascent, and everyone has commented how wonderful Marty Getz is. We're going to play a little bit more of Marty Getz's music. Here's Marty and the Psalms of Ascent. Here's his music. My soul, wait thou only, only upon God, for from Him is my expectation. My soul, wait thou only, only upon God, for from Him is my expectation. I shall not be moved. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. He is my defense. I shall not. My Messiah only, He only is my rock, He's the horn of my salvation. My Lord, Yeshua only, He only is my rock, He's the horn of my salvation. my defense, I shall not be moved. He is my defense, I shall not be moved. He is my defense, I shall not be moved. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malchuto And I shall not be moved. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. No, I shall not be We had such a good time making the Psalms of Ascent. 
That was Marty Getz and his music, and it was wonderful. We're now getting ready to do the Ruth series with Miles and Catherine Weiss. Welcome. I'm glad to see you all again. I love the Ruth story. It's such a simple story, and yet it gets a little more complicated if you really start studying it. It's really true. It's an amazing story that stands alone as a work of literature. It does. But yeah. it is an amazing love story on so many levels. So give me a level. Okay. The, uh, the first level is the story of Ruth and Naomi, the love story of a daughter-in-law and a mother-in-law. That has a lot of personal meaning for us because my mom became a believer, my Jewish mother, became a believer before she went to heaven. Oh, and wonderful. at the end of her life, the, the face that she recognized was my wife. Oh, how touching. Her Gentile daughter-in-law. So we have a personal connection with but this. But it, was, it wasn't as touching as, as you might have thought because at first I was an assault. Oh, being sure. A Gentile. Oh, sure. And so sure. I had to draw on God's love, and yeah. just like Ruth did, to, to bring Naomi back into the house of bread and mm -hmm. bring her back to out of her bitterness and d draw her out. So with Hannah, I had to draw on the love of God. Oh, and Hannah's such a wonderful name. Yeah. I love the name. And I think people forget that it really takes place in Bethlehem, house of bread. They're in a famine. They leave and everything goes wrong, could possibly go wrong. Yes. And yet this wonderful woman says, I'm going back with you. Right. I will, I'm going to be with you. And it's a real yeah. picture for today. Yeah. The other yeah. levels of the love story. One, of yeah. course, is the marriage between Ruth and Boaz, which right. is full of a prophetic messianic unfolding because Ruth then yeah. is j grafted into the line of Jesus. Right. And uh, it's an amazing story of how God overlooks the the curse on the Moabites and grafts yeah. in a Moabite woman. I'll, tell you, I'll teach about that. Oh, that's interesting. That's yeah. exciting. And the other part that's incredible is the story of the love affair between God and his Jewish people. How he promised us that we would find the house of bread. He promised us the land. He promised us that he yeah. would meet us yeah. in the land. And we're seeing that unfold today. And he feeds us. I mean, doesn't get the symbolisms and the ins and the outs. It doesn't get a whole lot better than that. I mean, it's amazing that, that the book of Ruth is traditionally read at Shavuot, what the oh, Christians call right. Pentecost. That's right. It's the traditional book that's read in order to speak right. about the harvest and the mm -hmm. first fruits and the goodness of God in providing for us and the goodness of God and His promises and the, the fact that He's a promise keeper. And the harvest. The, the harvest. harvest time. I right. mean, God uses everything, the seasons. He uses tools. He uses everything to teach about his goodness. I, it, it does excite me. Right. And there's so many other uh, teachings in there about the threshing floor and what the meaning of that is. I believe our guide, Arya Bar David, is going to yeah. teach about the tools of the times of the Bible. And he's going to teach about the, the threshing floor and the yeah. tools that are there. And then I'm going to add in something about oh, wow. the threshing of the nations. <gasps> oh, interesting. interesting. Threshing of the nations. Yes. See, my mind's already going. Well, it's already <laughs> thinking about it. Well, we're in that season right now where the nations yeah. are being weighed in the balance. Yeah. And it yeah. has to do with their relationship to Israel. And isn't it interesting? The nations that have cursed Israel no longer exist. They disappear. No longer exist. It's a real, it's a real tell for us to button down our hatches and get things going. Exactly. All right, so what does Ruth mean to you? Ruth means to me about covenant love, walking oh, with covenant, love. covenant okay. love, walking Gentile and Jew, walking together in covenant love. And it also means to me that God is faithful when you th face some of the most adverse circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here Naomi, yeah. she faced losing her husband, yeah. losing her two boys. Losing her sons. Losing I, I her would two just, boys. No. And, and being in a foreign land. Yeah. And yeah. and then knowing that she needed to take care of these two women, so she was distraught. So she at first she said, "Come with me," but then halfway home she's like, "I have nothing for you. What yeah. what, what am I yeah. going to do? Have another child?" <laughs> you know. So, so it, right yeah. there was the yeah. divide between yeah. and and Orpa chose to go back, right. but Ruth saw something in Naomi, and something in Naomi's yeah. life yeah. was communicated for her to say, yeah. "No, where you go, I will go. Where you where you where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people." The most she, famous words I think in, in the whole you know Old Testament, everybody knows what that is. Yeah, I love it. And but she it's was true. laying but hold of that yeah. covenant yeah. for herself, and in that love, yeah. I think something. I know something happened for. Naomi. So it means to me covenant love, walking together, good times or bad times, mm -hmm. being faithful to God. Yeah, yeah, and He will yeah. work all things together for good. And isn't it interesting how she saw in Naomi? Yes. And I love that point. Yeah. They need to see something in us. They need, people That's need right. to see that we're believers. We need to look different than heathens. Yes, we yes. really do. Yes, we do. And the other part of that is that, that Ruth was willing to 
see in Naomi something that now today the church is finally seeing in the Jewish people. That we have a covenant yeah. together, yeah. that God has always intended us to yeah. share a destiny. Yeah. And now we're seeing that. And even today when we bring believers to, to Israel, when the, yeah. when the Gentile yeah. believers walk down the street, yeah. the Jewish people will line up the streets and say, oh, the Notzrim are here. The shoots yeah. are here. Those oh, that have grown up from around the olive tree, which is also the word yeah. Jeremiah uses for the watchmen on the walls. Wow. The watchmen are here. Those that God intended yeah. to stand with the Jewish people are here. And, and you can tell who stands for the Jewish people. Yes. I mean, you really can. When you walk down the streets in Israel, you know who's for Israel. Yeah. It's, it's an incredible feeling. It's an incredible, I'm so proud of, of believers when they go to Israel and they're just, their little eyes open and they're like, oh, this is great. This is my Jewish roots. And do you mean that the synagogue comes from here and the teachings? Exactly. It's, and then here's Ruth, this beautiful picture of so many levels mm -hmm. of us. What a picture of restoration to yes, Ruth as, yes. a, as a Moabite. As she was a descendant mm -hmm. of Lot. Right. There was a turning away and there was a curse and there was a difficulty. And she overcame that. God chose her to overcome that right. turning away, mm -hmm. to turn her back and graft her into the commonwealth of Israel like Ephesians speaks of. Right. Mm -hmm. And took the worst of the worst, that the worst Moabites, they hated each other. Mm -hmm. And yet this gentle woman, I mean, the lineage of King David. Raw. <laughs> God, is, God is so good. He you know, so and also in, in Genesis 12, it talks about if you bless my people, I will yes. bless you. Yes. And I yes. really see this in the life of Ruth, that yeah. she was blessing mm -hmm. yeah. God's people and yeah. God blessed her. You yeah. know, he took her from poverty to blessing. Right. You know, and he, and he wants us to know that, that if we stand with the Jewish people, we will be blessed. Yes. Not blessed. only here on this blessed. earth, but in heaven. But you are blessed. I can remember, yeah. you know, really finding out about Israel and things and, and somehow my life was just much richer. Yes. Just much, much, much richer. Yeah. So it is, yeah. it's a blessing. Ruth is good. Naomi told her, she taught her how to approach certain customs and certain yeah. ways of the yeah. Torah uh, to, to go ahead and lay hold of her inheritance. And so. Ruth did not question her. Right. Did not question her. She did exactly what her mother-in-law told her to do. I, I know there are jokes in there that <laughs> means have told for years, but what a picture of loving your mother-in-law and right. listening and obeying. I thought it's just beautiful. It really is a picture of overcoming love, yeah. the yeah. power of love. Yeah. And uh, we're just thrilled that we get to teach it in the land and, and in uh, the land. share it with yeah. The, yeah. the partners of Zola's ministry. Well, I think we all have the same vision. So I right. believe that people needed to know those Jewish roots. Right. Not just the seven feasts. This is this is good. This is Old Testament that could really segue into the New Testament. Exactly. So it's an important ministry for all of us to look at the seasons as you know we're so lovingly saying but it's true there are seasons and mm -hmm. you know here's the season of harvest here's a season of reaping here's the season of planting mm -hmm. and you see it all in this what four chapters exactly four chapters yep. it's the I, it's incredible. It is an amazing book. It's so rich, so full, and to see it taught in the land, to see it connected yeah. to the land, to yeah. the implements, the agriculture, the seasons, the the people is going to be such a rich experience for our, our viewers. It's going to be is, really. It's, I don't. Really fun. I don't know if we've ever done Ruth. I think we probably have. You know, touched on mm -hmm. it, but to really go into the depth of Ruth. I think everyone's going to be really excited about it. And that was one of the things that got, yeah. caught our attention when we were called to do this with you, That's is right. that That's in right. the God's providence, we, we happen to be showing up by God's providence exactly when the book of Ruth is being taught. And just as Ruth happened on the field. It happened Boaz. on the field. That Boaz was, yeah. No coincidence. Nothing is happening. Yeah. <laughs> I love God. He's just amazing. You know, you mentioned uh, Ari Bar David. He is going to do some commentary on the threshing floors mm -hmm. and the customs in during Bible times. Here is Ari Bar David. How beautiful it is to sit around a table in a walled city, in a stone house, where you have the pita bread, you have the olive trees in front of you. We are now in a typical house of Beit Lechem. Beit Lechem, the center of food. In Hebrew, Lechem is bread. In Arabic, Lechem, Lachem, is meat. In other words, this is a center market where people could come and find food. Living inside a home like this, look, there's walls made of stones. This is limestone. This is the main rock here on the mountain. It's roofed with logs and some plastering on the walls to protect 
from the sun, from the rain. When you're tired and you want to sleep on the ground, just you put a match on the ground and you sleep. Look, you don't lose place for beds. What a difference of living here in home like this and being outside in the fields. Let's remember, Ruth, she was outside on the fields of Bethlehem. It's called Ephrata. But at the same time, Naomi was in a house like this, in a home, all day thinking about Ruth. And then in the evening time, Ruth left the field, and she brought some of the gleanings material with her to the room. And what a joyful meeting it was around the bed, when Naomi could take the grains and make out of this flour, and then bake pita bread for both of them. I love seeing the culture of the day, and I really thank REA for sharing with us the culture. It makes the Bible come alive. And I think Ruth, as much as any book of the Bible, really does that for us. So it's going to be incredible to see these teachings coming out of the land, from the people, from the, the, the way the scriptures come alive yeah. through the book of Ruth. Yeah. It's awesome. Ruth is awesome. Yeah. You were even mentioning how today they even leave the part of the, of the, of the land for the gleaners to come. You Thousands know. of years later, they still leave the corners of the field so that people, poor people walking along can still have food. Yeah. I, I find that incredible. Yeah. It's a real picture of God's heart for yeah. those who are without. Yeah. You know, it's not a handout because God yeah. had a great idea. I yeah. mean, obviously, he's the, yeah. he's the, guy, he's, he's, <laughs> he's the good he's idea good. maker. The idea man. <laughs> it's good. That, you know, it wasn't a handout, but that it was a way for people yeah. who were coming yeah. from a place of poverty. Yeah. They could have something, they do a little bit of work. Mm -hmm. But um, fortunately, Boaz left Ruth with bundles, you know, so he was giving bundles. her. Bundles. Isn't that blessing? Her. God yeah. does bless us and yeah. leaves us with bundles of love. Next week, Ruth, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Stay with us. God bless you. Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our offer on this program, the Half Shekel Keychain. This teardrop keychain contains an authentic half shekel coin from Israel and cites references from Exodus 30 and Ephesians 2. Reminiscent of the days when each child of Israel, rich or poor, gave a half shekel coin to make an atonement for his soul. Put your half shekel in your pocket. Salvation is now free. Call 1-800-WONDERS and ask for the half shekel keychain. And please remember, your gift to this ministry helps sustain this weekly telecast. Also, please call toll free or write to receive our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. It's absolutely free and contains insightful article and news commentary with a refreshing perspective you won't get from the mainstream media. The Levitt Letter is also available at levitt.com, along with current and archived TV programs, our national airing schedule, and much more. Please remember Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.